Hey everybody, so today we are gonna find out how many more weeks of winter there'll be. <laughs> From a uh, little white squirrel. Yep. Here in Brevard. Brevard, North Carolina. Yep. So follow us. happen either the squirrel will get sick and then when they call a rehab or sometimes it's too late um, or they will keep the animal until it bites somebody and it's not a matter of if they bite it's when they bite well then they take the animal and they just set it outside and let it go and the animal can't survive so it ends up dying so either way it's a cruel cruel death really for them really. What's the natural <laughs> lifespan? Um, in the wild, two to three years really? is the average. And in, in captivity, if they are in perfect health and um, no severe injuries, eight years, if you can get them past eight years, you're doing really good. Wow. But uh, I, I had one that just passed away uh, about a month ago. She was 14. Wow. She was wow. 14. How many do you have? Oh, right now I've got, well, including the ones that are getting ready to be released because I got a bunch in in fall. And you can't release them once the leaves are off the trees because they don't, they can't build a nest and they don't have a food store. Um, I've got about 10 that are ready to be released and then I have several uh, non-release. I have uh, two that are blind, I have two that are paralyzed in their back legs. Yeah, and I've got, um, I had one actually that has a severe birth defect. It looks like a frog. His, his body is short. His head is the perfect size, but his body's only about this short. So when he goes running around the cage, he looks like a little frog. And so, of course, his name is Froggy. And I've had him since he was a baby. I had also had one at one time that was, um, uh, I can't remember what the name of the disease is it had. People get it. Anyway, no, <laughs> I can't remember what she had, but anyway, yeah, she lived for about, she lived for about seven years, and I was very fortunate to get her that far, but. Episcopate was seven, right? Episcopate was about, he was about 11. Yeah, he was old, yeah, he was old. He was 11, going on 12, somewhere in that area, so he was an old guy, and he had a lot of, he had a lot of health issues, and, but. Yeah, I remember his teeth. Yeah, we had to. File his teeth. We actually ended up having to have the teeth pulled, mm. and so then he had to have a soft diet beyond that right. um, because you know a rodent's teeth constantly grow right. and so you have to trim them and that's another thing that happens in the wild is from an injury or fall from a tree or something it'll break the jaw and when it heals it doesn't line up and so the teeth will constantly grow and it'll it can if it's the top ones can grow up into their brain um, and they'll either die from infection or they die from starvation because they can't eat she is about she's between seven and eight right now I say closer to eight so she's at the prime of her life right now. So we're, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed that she does well. She seems okay. calm. Right. Well, and yeah, last time she didn't like it at all. But yeah, but it's it's better here. It's not as loud. Is she considered a exotic pet? Uh, she would be, and in the state of North Carolina, you have to have a wildlife rehabilitator's license to possess a wild animal in captivity. Otherwise, it's a big fine, and jail could even get jail time out of it if the wildlife officer wants to press it. Um, but I do have a permit for her. She is an educational animal. She goes with me in different places, and Joanne has me up to the um, field days for the um, middle schools, and so she goes with us there. She's lovely. She seems like she's very comfortable with you. Yep, she is. She's taking everything in because she doesn't really get out in the public like this a whole lot. Most of the time it's just kind of like a, a small group. But she's doing better. She's our girl. And at home her name is Ella. I am. Her screen name is Pisgah. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. So Thank you guys we are... for coming. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to the 10th annual White Squirrel Day. Yay, let's hear it for her. She's going to make her prognostications, and she is pretty good, let me tell you. Like I say, I've been doing this for 10 years. It started 
as a, as a lark, as a joke. Uh, Ann Sharpstein, some of you know her, uh, came up with this idea, and we said, oh, okay, we'll try it. And we went over to the Blue Ridge Bakery, and we packed the place. They were lying down the street, literally. Uh, back then, it was Pisgah uh, Peak. Uh, Squirrels have just so much life in them. And uh, he was replaced by Pisgah Penny a few years ago. One thing we should make perfectly clear is Pisgah Penny is an independent uh, a squirrel. Nobody went out and caught her and trapped her and made her into a pet. It's illegal, first of all. She was injured, and the Pisgah uh, uh, Pet uh, play, uh, Institute, White Squirrel Institute, <laughs> so I named it after, um, rehabilitated her. If they didn't, she would have died. So she she had, is a talented little squirrel, and we're going to get her to make her prognostications in just a few minutes. Instrumental, we have to uh, salute her for putting this all together for us. She's done a fantastic job thus far. We have the mayor here. The mayor. She is going to be reading a proclamation before we make the predictions and uh, make it official that today is White Squirrel Day in Transylvania County and Brevard. So we'll get all that underway in just a few minutes. Keep listening. And we're on the air on WSQL Radio. Back to you, Tarina. side note to mention, and that is when the squirrel does make her appearance, don't yell, scream, cheer, applaud at the moment because it will spook her and she'll go running back and hide the rest of the morning. Uh, she's a squirrel, so uh, she's not accustomed to public speaking, so uh, keep that in mind. But we'll get to that in just a moment, but right now, Maureen, take it away. Thank you, Don. As always, this is one of the highlights of the year here in Brevard. Here in Brevard, this is one of the highlights. I'm so glad to see so many of the public coming. And I do want to issue the following proclamation. City of Brevard, proclamation number 24, 2024, TAC 01. This is actually the very first proclamation that I've made this year. White Squirrel Day. The city of Brevard hereby proudly declares and ordains February 2nd, 2024 as White Squirrel Day and further orders that Groundhog Day will forever and hereafter be recognized and honored in the city of Brevard as White Squirrel Day for the following reasons. Whereas, in keeping with Brevard's great heritage of welcoming and receiving visitors from around the world, Pisca Penny honorably serves as the city's official White Squirrel Ambassador for Brevard. Whereas Pisca Penny has established herself as a beloved and valued member of this community and openly asserts her love for Brevard, waterfalls, mountain biking, hiking, and everything else that makes our town the coolest small town in America. <laughs> Whereas Pisca Penny has further established
established herself as possessing unique and valuable skills in making useful and accurate predictions, including accurately predicting the winner of the Super Bowl each year, while Puxatani Phil has established himself as, let's be honest, an ill-tempered and highly unreliable predictor of anything. <laughs> Therefore, we celebrate this day as Piscopenny assumes the duties and responsibilities asked of her, and heretofore will make all predictions asked of her on White Squirrel Day, thereby forever relieving Puxatawney Phil of these duties. <laughs> Besides, she's way cuter than Phil. <laughs> I, Maureen Kopeloff, Mayor of the City of Brevard, do hereby proclaim February 2nd, 2024 as White Squirrel Day in the City of Brevard. Signed, February 2nd, 2024. It's official. Thank you. Maureen our Mayor. Very good. I, I read this morning that Puxatawney Phil is only 39% accurate, and he's been doing it for 107 years. He's, I know, pathetic, isn't it? We also have sponsors we want to mention, the White Squirrel Shop. So if you go by the White Squirrel Shop, say thank you to them for helping us put this on today, and also the Heart of Brevard as well. All right, we're going to take a break, play a song on the radio while we get uh, Penny all set up to make her prognostications. As you can see, we're going to go for early spring and six more weeks of winter first, and then the one that everybody's going to bet on uh, is who's going to win the Super Bowl. So it's going to be exciting. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're listening to Q102 FM. All right, thank you, Tarina, and we are back broadcasting live. And if you all want to move in a little bit closer, you might be able to get a better view of uh, Penny as she does her thing. We're going to bring uh, her out here. Well, she is out. She's already, she's already given an interview on live television, so she's primed and she's ready to go. As you can see, the first prognostication that she will make, whether we're in for six more weeks of winter, or we're going to have an early spring. It's supposed to be 66 degrees today, so keep your fingers crossed and we'll see what happens. Ready? I'm ready when you are. Here we go. You need a drum roll. <laughs> now remember, please, let's not make a lot of noise, no matter what she picks, because she will run away back into her secret cave. Last year, she liked to jump down. That's why we put the signs at the bottom as well. There she is. Oh. Come on, Penny. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, she made her toy. It was quick. All right. Well, take you just a minute while we set up for uh, the football. I tell you what, Jarena, if you want, we we'll come back to the station. Play a song. We'll come back and she will make the big prediction, the one that you can actually put money on, the winner of the Super Bowl. Hey, Penny. How you doing? Good job, honey. Good job. I hate to admit you're right, but I'm afraid we're going to have six more weeks of winter. We'll see what happens. Thank you, Tarina. Yes, indeed. We do appreciate you. And uh, we are back, and the big moment has come now. She's already predicted, like you just heard, six more weeks of winter. One point we did want to make, and we were making it, and that's the fact that uh, Penny is not a pet. She wasn't uh, brought to be a pet. She was injured. This lady right here saved her, and uh, this is why we're doing this right now. For the Institute, she helps not only squirrels, but other small animals small to mammals. survive, small mammals to survive and whatever, so it's a very worthy cause. All right, she's gonna make her prediction. You wanna go ahead and put her in, and we'll find out whether uh, uh, San Francisco 49ers or Kansas City Chiefs are gonna win the Super Bowl right now. Pretty exciting, she has been pretty right on in the past, I should mention that. Now, she did miss last year, but for the previous year, she's been right on. So we'll see what's gonna happen. Now she's gonna be shy. Come on, Penny. There she goes, she just popped out. She's debating right now, I can tell. She's deep in thought. She's a Swifty. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, no, she's had enough. <laughs> Tie game. She's saying, we'll see. She was leaning toward Kansas City, but I can't say really she picked them. She was looking out the side window there. So we'll see. There she comes. Oh, yeah, I think it's pretty sure. I think it's pretty sure she's done. She can't. Wait, wait, wait. All right. All right. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can't be hanging out over that way. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Kansas City. Kansas City. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just, I'm sorry you're San Francisco fans. I don't want to be here. Yeah, let me and Stephanie's enjoying her white squirrel cake. Yummy, yummy. They had these cute little white squirrels on the table. Little centerpieces. Yeah. Little white squirrel balloons. This whole town really does go all out. There's specific shops that just advocate white squirrel souvenirs and memorabilia. So it's a big deal in this little sweet town. It is. They, they had the local news and um, DJ yeah from the local radio station here so that was awesome really cool so that was fun wasn't that fun that was fun um, we got to meet quite a few nice local people mm -hmm. um, that sat at our table we were able to see um, um, say your name honey for me Pisca Penny yep Pisca Penny, little white squirrel. Um, they were able to raise money um, through adoptions and um, donations for their rehab mm -hmm. for the white squirrel and injured small mammal. All I could think of was squirrel pot pie, but. <laughs> Where we come from, small um, squirrel pot pie is a thing. And yep. you're, you're darn tootin', that's good stuff. And some fried squirrel. <laughs> yep, yep, all good. But, but here we are, and yeah. so and so she <laughs> so so Pisca Penny um, <laughs> disagreed with Punxsutawney. Uh, uh -huh, she, she says did. six more weeks of winter. Yes, so she did. Take that for what it is. We'll see. We'll see who's right. <laughs> I had too much. They had a big, wonderful celebratory cake, and right. I had a big piece of that. And then um, <laughs> just like, yeah, sugar overload. Yeah, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then she also picked the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl, but but that was kind of a 100%, was it? She was kind no, of like, No, she was ah. sure. She was sure it was going to be the Chiefs. Yeah, so um, we'll see if she's right with that. <laughs> but that was exciting. Yes, That's it was. something that um, we weren't expecting, you no, know, for no. Groundhog's Day to come listen to a squirrel's predictions. <laughs> right. But here we are. <laughs> so we, we want to thank everybody for watching if you like this video please like and subscribe pity me because stephanie's having a sugar overload and until next time have, have a, a stephanie day, day.